Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining engineers versus moonshine runners. Now the reason I chose to do this topic is it helps explain the relationship between horsepower, torque, RPM, and gearing. I've been getting a lot of questions of people saying, well what if a car has this much torque and this much horsepower, or what if a car has more torque than horsepower? Like, How is that affecting acceleration? And I think Formula One versus NASCAR is a good comparison for demonstrating how cars with equal horsepower and different torque can accelerate at the same rate. And so what I'm going to demonstrate basically is, is why horsepower dictates acceleration and how this can be achieved with either a high torque or a low torque. Uh, both Formula One and NASCAR have a pretty close to the same amount of horsepower. One has about double the torque or maybe two and a half times the torque. Um, and uh, no hard feelings against NASCAR, I'm just kidding around. I actually grew up in North Carolina and uh, as a kid I would go to races and they were great fun. So I've got a spreadsheet here where I've kind of laid out the two different engines and they're both going to be put in a Formula One car and when I say put in a Formula One car all I mean is we're just going to go with a Formula One car weight of 1400 pounds. So the assumptions we've got going with this uh, before we get started uh, any high speed results that I show are going to be skewed due to wind resistance. I don't have any wind resistance incorporated here. Uh, also, constant torque. Um, the torque curve is just going to be held constant the whole time, uh, which isn't realistic. Uh, and the systems are all going to be 100% efficient, which is, which is not realistic. But anyways, we have an F1 engine. And it, uh, an F1 engine typically creates somewhere around 750 horsepower and uh, 200 pound-feet of torque. So for this, I uh, set an RPM limit of 18,000 RPM, uh, and that's when it's going to create this peak uh, horsepower, 750 horsepower, and it's going to be creating 219 uh, torque flat across the board. That's just calculated using the horsepower equation uh, for horsepower, torque, and RPM. Same with the NASCAR engine. NASCAR engines uh, produce about 850 horsepower, but they have an RPM limit of around 9,000. So the NASCAR engine's producing quite a bit more torque. Um, I was looking up uh, torque for NASCAR engines. It looks like it's around 500. So sure enough, when we put in uh, 850 horsepower at uh, 4,000 at 9,000 RPM, it spits out about 500 horsepower, 496. So 496 is going to be our flat torque curve. Now, what we want to, what we're trying to realize here is that even though this NASCAR engine has two and a half times the torque as this F1 engine. When you put the same engine in the same, or each of these engines in the same car, uh, they both accelerate relatively the same. So I've got these things here where we're calculating uh, max speed, torque, the force at the wheels, the acceleration in G's, and then the time it takes to get to the max speed. So for example, the F1 engine uh, is mated with a seven speed transmission, uh, just like F1 engines are, and that's got uh, some gear ratios here which I've made up and a final gear ratio here. I've kept the final gear ratio the same for both the NASCAR and the Formula One uh, at 3.5 and, and these are basically arbitrary. I've made them up. Uh, I couldn't really seem to find any good data out there of what teams actually use. So anyways, uh, what we've got here is, for example, let's just run through one of these. Uh, the gear ratio, if, if your first gear ratio with this F1 engine is 6 to 1 and you've got the final drive ratio 3.5, a tire radius of 13 inches, well then the max speed your car can go in first gear is 66 miles an hour. Um, and I've got re uh, video references here up at the top, so if you don't know how I get these numbers, uh, you can watch my video Car Gears. These numbers come from my video on first gear torque, and all of these numbers here come from my video on how horsepower affects acceleration. So this is kind of bringing it all together, which is nice. Uh, so what we've got uh, 66 miles an hour and because of the gear ratio advantage, the torque advantage, it's going to be creating 4,600 uh, pound-feet of torque uh, at, that, at that RPM, which is pretty incredible. Uh, this is going to relate uh, in G's, an acceleration to about 3 G's, and that means that this car could get to 66 miles an hour theoretically in uh, one second if, if traction would allow for it, which it would not. Um, so anyways, that's what we've got going on here, and you can see that it takes one second to get to 66, and then uh, second 1.6 seconds to get to 90 miles an hour, 2.75, and then it reaches a top speed of 210 miles an hour in 5.9 seconds. Now, 
that's unrealistic because of wind, obviously, uh, air resistance, so it would actually be much longer than, than six seconds. But theoretically, just based on the gearing, um, and, and it doesn't really matter, since we're neglecting wind for both of these, uh, it doesn't matter what these numbers spit out. We're just trying to see that they're pretty close to each other. So with the NASCAR engine, uh, with its uh, gear ratios, um, I kept the gear ratios relatively similar. These are just about half of these, and uh, the final drive was, was the same. So gear ratios are half on this because the RPM limit is half. So uh, going through, it reaches 71 miles an hour in 1.02 seconds. Now remember, the F1 engine did that 66 in one second, so they're pretty close. Um, and then so on and so forth for each of the different gears and uh, reaches the top of 214 in 5.78 seconds. So here I've graphed uh, the acceleration of both of these engines if they were put into the 1400 pound F1 car. And here we got on the left uh, the speed in miles per hour and here at the bottom is going to be the time in seconds uh, in order to get there. So you can see both reach about 60 miles an hour in one second. Uh, both reach 200 miles an hour in about five seconds. And you can see how close these two lines are to each other. Uh, the one in blue being the NASCAR engine, uh, slightly faster because it has 850 horsepower than, rather than 750. Uh, and then on the bottom, the F1 engine. But you can see, even though the NASCAR engine has so much more torque, it's actually getting there, uh, ac accelerating at relatively the same rate. So finally, one more demonstration here. Uh, you can just play around with the parameters of the F1 engine uh, and it spits out different numbers, but everything really stays the same as far as acceleration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the RPM limit in half and cut the final drive ratio in half. And so that's what I've got here with this RPM factor. And as you can see, RPM's cut in half, drive ratio's cut in half, but none of these numbers changed. Now, the torque, doubled. So back when we were at 1, 219, when we put in 2 here, the torque doubles to 438 pound-feet of torque. But because it's at a lower RPM, the acceleration is still the same. And so you have to change the gearing to compensate uh, for the lower RPM and the higher torque. So you cut everything in half uh, for the gearing, and that gives you the exact same acceleration uh, than if the engine was 750 horsepower uh, and only creating 219 pound-feet of torque. So you can see how related horsepower and torque are and how even if an engine has high torque, uh, it's still not going to change its acceleration if it's limited uh, with the gearing and the RPM limit. So I'm going to include this video or, or this uh, spreadsheet here in a link so that you guys can check it out and look at the equations if you would like uh, in the video description. So thanks for watching.